friends, it's Isabella and I am back with a very interesting vlog. Um, I thought that it would be kind of fun to do like a Studio Ghibli inspired vlog, um, like the aesthetics and the landscapes, the visuals, everything. I just thought it would be fun and um, I have been having fun. I did get my first injury of the day, but we're still having fun. I know in last week's reading vlog, I said that I was going to be reading Vengeful, which is the sequel to Vicious by V.E. Schwab. But since I had this whole idea of the Studio Ghibli aesthetic, I thought it would be better to read a more ethereal, a more magical type of book. So I went ahead and picked up The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which if you remember, this is one of the books that I tried to read when I was in my reading slump so I was a little bit scared to try and read this one again because I don't want to fall back into my reading slump but um, I've been reading the whole day also look at my adorable bookmark I found it on my way home and it was just too cute to not use so I have read I honestly haven't read that much <laughs> I've read like 60 pages so far and the writing is really reminiscent of Lainey Taylor's Strange the Dreamer if you've been here for a while then you know that I absolutely adore Strange the Dreamer it's just one of the most beautifully written books that I've ever read and to this day I still think about how magical it felt to read it and how wonderful the characters the writing the everything about that book was. So I really like that as I'm reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I'm getting like hints here and there of that type of magical realism. <laughs> I feel like I'm the last person to read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because basically everybody read this as soon as it came out, but it's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I totally don't feel out of the loop. Um, I do not feel like an outsider, it's fine. Addie LaRue has made a deal with a god, but not like one of the good gods. Apparently this god deals in souls, so basically she was asking him for help. She wanted to be free from her life because her parents were forcing her to marry this man and she wanted her life to be her own and you know, like very basic human rights. But back in that time, I think it's like what, 1700? Yeah, 1707, women didn't really have a choice in who they married <laughs> so she made a deal with a god that basically i don't know how still but whoever she meets as soon as she's out of sight they forget about her like nobody can remember Addie or adeline larue that's her name um as soon as she's out of their sight they seem to forget about her they don't remember anything at all it's made for a very lonely life overall she's just like a very sad person <laughs> Um, but there are a lot of moments, the way that she describes her feelings and her emotions that I feel very connected to because she's a very introspective person and I really relate to that. And there are a lot of times where I'm like, wow, I feel like I could have written that or, or like I would have thought things like that. So it's like really beautiful and I'm really enjoying my time. I'm so glad that I'm out of my reading slump. Like I hate saying that because I don't want to jinx myself, but I feel like I am. And I'm so glad that even though I'm still excited to read Vengeful, I'm really happy that I decided to read Invisible Life for this weekend because it's just so magical and so ethereal. And I feel like it's just, it's one it's a wonderful read it's a little bit sad so far because as i mentioned not being remembered kind of sucks i'm really excited to see where the story goes i really want to see how the story is going to develop what's going to happen is she just going to die is she just going to like vanish into the unknown into the forgotten like i just really want to know and this has 442 pages as I mentioned, I'm only 60 pages in, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be finishing this book this weekend because I do want to spend some time with my family and just like chill. So I'm going to see how much I get done. I, I cannot get over how cute my bookmark is, but I'm going to see how much I get done of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And I also brought Vengeful with me. Um, Of course, I'm not going to be reading two books simultaneously, but if I do ever feel like I'm getting a little bit stuck, 
um, because since this is magical realism, sometimes it's not as fast and it's not as like action packed. Like it's, as I mentioned, it's very introspective and sometimes it's just like a very emotional roller coaster. So when I don't want to be going through it, I may be picking up Vengeful just so that I can be back to what I know works. This is one of the books that I was most excited for in 2020 and I never got to read it unfortunately so I'm very very excited to be reading this and to be sharing this experience with you guys. If you've read Addie LaRue let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what your favorite V.E. Schwab book is because I know that a lot of people said that this is their new favorite V.E. Schwab book. Like this is the best that she's ever written so I'm very excited to see what the buzz is all about now i think we're going to have lunch and just enjoy because it's been very cold it's been raining it's been like cozy sweater type of weather and i'm just very happy to be here this weekend it's like so perfect like i love it how are you guys doing what are you reading i know i'm like in a very aesthetic type of mood right now but i did want to mention i finished season one of attack on titan and i'm almost finishing season two i'm missing two episodes and oh my god um i can't like i i literally can't sister say hi say hi hi <laughs> Um, my Instagram is now full of Attack on Titan, which is also very dangerous because I don't want to see any spoilers. I am loving Attack on Titan. It is very violent, it is very graphic, and it's like hardcore. So if you're not into that type of anime, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're like me, and you love the thrill, if you love the adrenaline, I would 100% recommend Attack on Titan. I'm probably the last person to be watching Attack on Titan, to be honest. I'm very late to the party, but I am so glad to be here. I love that instead of books, I'm talking about the animes that I'm currently reading. I swear, this is the reason that I don't get any reading done. Attack on Titan is it, my dudes. So if you're not watching it, you should. And if you are watching it, tell me who your favorite character is tell me who you're rooting for just tell me everything without spoiling it i basically i hope you're having a fantastic day whenever you're seeing this i hope you have been drinking lots of water getting some exercise like just a little bit you know don't overexert yourself just a little bit of exercise every day it goes a long way i should probably follow my own advice <laughs> Today, I want to reach maybe page 150. Um, later on, we are going to be watching a Studio Ghibli film, of course, like we have to. And yeah, we'll just see where the day takes us. Um, sun. Okay, we'll- wow. Thank you, book. Thank you, Hattie. Okay, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! <laughs>
as you can see we're back from the mountains and um i'm looking not great <laughs> you know it's just one of those days where you just don't want to try at all and you just stay in your pjs you just spend your day in front of the tv or just reading your book um or just staring into space thinking about absolutely nothing head empty thoughts empty it's one of those days um, but I have been reading quite a lot of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I have to say that I'm loving it so much like oh my god guys I can't believe that I waited this long to start The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I think I'm just going to be calling it Addie LaRue because this is a pretty long title. I feel like when I was in my reading slump I can't believe I'm talking about it in past tense wow when I was in my reading slump and I tried reading Addie LaRue, I just feel like you have to be in a certain mood to be able to fully enjoy the story. So I'm very happy that I decided to put it down back then and to pick it up now because I feel like I'm in the perfect mood for this type of book. It's this really wonderful, magical story that deals with gods and wishes and art and beauty and etherealness just overall and it all starts with Adil Rue and her wanting freedom for her own life. She wants to be free from her parents wishes and from her parents expectations. She doesn't want to fit into society and she doesn't want to just become someone's wife. She wants to actually have a life of her own and one day she grows so desperate that she makes a wish oh 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 my flower bookmark <laughs> so one day she gets so desperate that she decides to make a wish to one of the gods that's not so kind um not so good not so benevolent i mean we still don't know a lot about him and even if we did i wouldn't tell you because i don't want to spoil it but basically he's one of the bad gods let's call him that um, one of the gods that you shouldn't call upon because they work like in the dark, they're part of the darkness in a way, and she makes a bargain with him, she sells her soul to him in exchange for her freedom, but of course it comes with a cost and now nobody can remember her. Literally no memory of her stays in your head ever and it's a very lonely existence she has no one that cares for her no one that can even say her name she can't say her own name it becomes a very lonely existence and she has lived like this for 300 years she was born in the 1700s and it's now 2014 the god that granted her her wish visits her once a year on the day of the anniversary that they exchanged this deal they did the deal they did the deed <laughs> every year he asks her if he's ready to give over her soul like if she's ready to give up and to just die perish cease to exist and every year she keeps on fighting and i feel like that fighting spirit of hers has made me love her so much like at the beginning i was relating to her so much and i was like oh my god she has a way well v Schwa, but also in a way addy has a way of just like being able to put into words some of the emotions that i felt for so long that i've never really been able to articulate and then having like reading them in the book it's kind of like a slap in the face like wait i didn't know that i wasn't the only weirdo that felt this way and it's just so validating to see your feelings and your emotions in a book and it's just ugh, i love Addie so much and to see her grow into herself and to see her not giving up and fighting every day is so wonderful. This does have the type of back and forth narrative because it does go between the past and the present. The past in the 1700s when she first was cursed or granted her wish and then the present which is currently 2014 and it's just like a really wonderful mix of how she first was when this all began and how she's been living with it uh, up until now for 300 years and like the interlacing of these two timelines is just really wonderful to see it's so entertaining and there hasn't been a single page where i haven't been like devouring every second of this story i feel like this is one of those books where you just never want it to end i'm so glad that this has over 400 pages because i just i 
I am living this story. I am loving being in this world with these characters, getting to know them, getting to love them. It's such a wonderful experience. And again, I'm probably the last person to have read Addie LaRue, but if you're one of the few that still hasn't picked it up, I would really recommend it. I actually have more than one copy of Addie LaRue and it happened by accident. It's not like I bought multiple copies, they just kept coming. <laughs> So I actually wanted to show a few of them. This is the first one, of course, the one that I am reading. This is the uncorrected advanced reading copy that I received from the publishers, which is still kind of crazy. Like I wasn't vlogging back when I received it, so I don't have like the footage of me crying over receiving this and the PR package that was like full of little trinkets. It was so wonderful. Oh my God, I cried so much but it's like unbelievable to think that i'm like a part of a pr list like that's just insane and the fact that i have an arc of what's probably going to be a new favorite book is just nirvana <laughs> the other copy that i have is actually the only one that i bought and it's the one that's um in the owl crate special box that they did for Addie larue it's this wonderful hardcover and this is it didn't come with a dust jacket it's just like a naked hardcover that's sexy <laughs> this is the front and then this is the back it says never pray to never pray to the gods that answer after dark it's just like i don't know how this effect is called but it's just like really beautiful and this is the spine these are like the end papers and of course of course, it's signed by V. Schwab. Thank you. In the Owl Crate box, we also got really amazing items. And that's one of the main reasons that I got this box because it just, it was a dream. All of the objects were so amazing. Again, I wasn't vlogging when I received this box. So unfortunately, I don't have the footage, but we do, we do still have the items. So why am I talking in plural? We do still have the items. I think this is probably like my favorite item. It's just like, basically like a picture holder picture frame magnetic this is the this is an art print of addy and then this is like the frame nice and then you can just connect it and ta-da it's beautiful i love it i'm please i love it and then it also came with a candle he is the darkness she met that night Feral magic in a lover's form. Forest, earth, wood smoke, and night. How does night smell? I mean, I've smelled it before, but... Oh my god, that's so fresh though. Low-key smells like my dad's cologne, but wow, I love it. Like, with a few hints of um, wood. Oh, I love that yeah mm -hmm. yes it also came with this pencil case that has this really beautiful illustration of a skeleton <laughs> and inside i saved this thing this this little thing that says il, mm, the french people are going to come for me i'm so sorry but it says il était, il était une fois il était une fois il était un fois once upon a time <laughs> And you basically put it in your thumb like this. And it's so basically you can hold your book more comfortably. Um, I still have yet to use it, but as you can see, it's actually pretty handy. Why haven't I used this yet? <laughs> I mean, it's probably because after I received this box, um, I didn't read for like seven years, but maybe it's time to start using it finally. <laughs> and then the other copy that I have, which is stunning, and it came in the Illumicrate box that I didn't know I was going to receive. Like I received that um, by surprise basically. So Illuma Cray, I love you. <laughs> like I, I, you're my ride or die. I would give everything to you. I would sell my soul to the darkness for you. There you go. That's as far as I can go. This is the beautiful edition of Addie LaRue. Look at this. Oh my God. I actually haven't seen under the dust jacket. Oh my god, wait! Wow, 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 wow. Oh my god, what? Okay, inside! 
Oh my god, wait, are you kidding? Oh, oh, oh. Is this also signed by her? Yes. Yes. Wow, I love how the, the title itself is kind of like vanishing. Just like Addie from People's Memories. Ouch. Oh my god, I love this. And it has like shiny silver painted edges, which is stunning. Like, why had I never like perused this edition? This is fantastic and it's kind of like i know three editions of the same book is not that wild but for me to have three editions of a book that i hadn't even read is kind of wild so i really wanted to show all of these to you guys because uh, i love it so much and i i kind of low-key hate that they're all different like um heights like how am i supposed to organize this on my bookshelf i have no idea but that's a problem for tomorrow. Today, I think I'm just going to keep on reading more of Addie LaRue. So far, I'm in page, what is this page? <laughs> okay, I'm in part three, which is called 300 Years and Three Words. If you know the three words, let me know down below. <laughs> I'm in page 164, and of course, I'm not going to be finishing this by tonight. I don't plan to, I want to, live in this book for as long as I can. I want to relish every single word, so I'm not going to speak through it. I just really want to like, uh, I want to be in this world forever. It's not the happiest of books, but wow. It's one of the, it's one of the most magical books. Um, it's one of the most beautiful. It's one of the most ethereal. Like, I could just go on and on about Addie LaRue, but now I think I'm just going to go to reading and I'm also going to end this vlog here because I'm not really going to be doing much after I film this. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, which was a little bit different from what I usually do. Um, I really wanted to do like a Studio Ghibli inspired vlog and I had so much fun filming in all of those beautiful spots. I had fun with the book. I had fun just thinking up of ideas of what I could do and how I could channel my inner aesthetic. And it was just so fun and so wonderful. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys would like to see from me in the future. I hope you guys stay healthy until the next time that we see each other and stay happy, stay hydrated, stay exercising, stay positive, stay sane <laughs> um yes i hope you guys stay happy until the next time that we see each other i really do hope you enjoyed this vlog and i will see you in the next one bye hey wow. jimmy you nice keep going